All right, so today I'm going to continue on where we left off last time, which uh, with uh, getting the uh, Go co server to run in the background. Let's see, here it is. Oops. So uh, last time we left off right here where we had a server running, um, or rather, so yeah, we, we had a server running last time. So uh, Somewhere in that general area. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, restore our server. We shut It got shut down last time, so uh, give it a name. Um, how big do we have it last time? I think... 16 gigs. I think I went up to 160. Yeah. It's good. While you can shrink it and grow it a bit, uh, I recommend trying to keep it general size when you're restoring from a snapshot. Um, you don't want to accidentally like, shrink the hard drive smaller than... Uh, the amount of data, data you've got on your uh, server. San Francisco. They're probably not too good for you, Jamie, but they'll taste <laughs> good. Oh, that's good to check. <laughs> so snapshots. So yeah, go from distributions tab to snapshots. And uh, here's all the snapshots that got taken. So uh, here's uh, test server class Go, which is where we left off at. And uh, private networking, IPv6, and uh, SSH key. I don't think the SSH key is actually necessary because it's all set up already, but might as well. I think it's I think it sends another e an extra email if you uh, don't check it. And I'm zoomed in. That's fine. So while that's working, I will go back here. So uh, last time we had our Go code running, we could go to our website and look at it, but it only worked when we had an SSH SSH connection active running the server. If we shut down that SSH connection, the server got shut down, and uh, that kind of stinks for our website. So uh, I'll start off by telling, teaching how to configure system D. So uh, the long-term support version of Ubuntu that's currently out uses a, a background process manager called initv. Everything besides Ubuntu has been using system D for a while, and Ubuntu, like the version after the last long-term support, flipped over to system D. So that's why I've been using Ubuntu 15.10, is because I want to teach System D because that's going to be what's generally in use in the future, even though the current long-term support of Ubuntu, which most servers are running on, is using an older technology. So also, uh, as much as people hate System D, I found that it's easier to set up than uh, init v if you don't know shell scripting. Init v, you basically just wrote shell scripts that would run your code. And if you didn't know how to write a 100 uh, line long shell ship script, uh, you were kind of stuck. So whereas, yeah, whereas system D, this is the entire file that you'll be putting, creating, much easier. All right, so the test server's started up. So let's get our IP address and SSH in. Anybody have any questions about daemons? Like what a daemon is? You guys all good? <laughs> So system D stands for system daemon. Um, so the daemons in uh, compute, computer science refers to a program that's running in the background, essentially. It has no, no front end. It will keep running regardless of what's going on. Which, considering we want to keep running when our, ser when our SSH server's down, that's a good thing. Why do you think they called them daemons? Who knows? Um, before I do that, though, I want to show a little uh, thing I learned uh, last night. Go. If you end a command on Linux or Mac with the ampersand sign, it will actually run it in the background. So our server is running, but we still have our console app. It's actually running in the background. But if we disconnect and refresh our page, hey, look, it's still running. That's odd. <laughs> Not what you expected? No, I expected it to go down too. But uh, So which one did you run there? Well, ST server go? How so I just I just go oh, run. Oh, 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 so make that a little wider. I'm like, what is ST server? There you go. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, ending with the ampersand will run in the background. This is not helpful for us though, because what if our server has to reboot in the middle of the night? It wouldn't turn the server back on until we uh, went back in and fixed that. So uh, let's see. How do you shut it off now? Uh, kill process. Kill ten twenty six seven. There we go. That should do it. 
daemon derives from the Greek uh, from the Greek uh, mythology daemon, which is a be super being working in the background. Oh wow! Uh, Wikipedia is the greatest thing. Wikipedia is awesome. So I'm not actually sure how to kill that. So. <laughs> um, you might be able to do kill all go. Kill go. Kill all. Yeah. Let God sort them out. Um, all right. Well, whatever. Pseudo reboot. <laughs> so it's it's an SSD. It reboots fast. It's not gonna. So, so yeah. That's that's the that's the quick and dirty and easy way of getting your server running in the background. But uh, it's not gonna help if your server go, crashes or whatever. It'll you have to go back in and restart it. And you may not know it's crashed until you start getting a bunch of angry emails from people who uh, can't get to your website. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. <laughs> All right, we're already back up. I suppose that's the bad side. If you find your server's crashed and no one has said that, uh, <laughs> that anything's gone wrong. Yes. So, uh, so for system D, we'll create a file here in the etc, which is where most config options are set up. Slash system D slash system, and you'll give it whatever file name you want with a dot service extension. So sudo nano slash etc slash system d slash system slash and give it a file name, so I'm just going to call it serve for server with a dot service extension. All right. So we've got nano up now. So and here's our uh, config file, which I will paste in here. So uh, unit section has uh, various like uh, extra metadata. So give it a description so that if there's some sort of error or whatever, your terminal will tell you it's the Go server that crashed and not uh, process number XYZ, which isn't very helpful. Um, the install section is for uh, systemd, how it's basically running it. So we're just saying wanted by multi-user.target, which basically means it can run, which will be the, one, the actual thing that's managing the background process. And then service section here is where we actually configure our stuff that we care about. So first off, there's exec start, which we will, uh, which basically is the full path to the exe. So uh, let me misspell my own name multiple times. <laughs> so uh, where do we have everything? I'm just gonna. I think it was under Todd, wasn't it? No. No, it's under me. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it into a uh, my uh, executable into a slash serve folder and just call it serve. Um, you can place it wherever you want. And then the working directory is just basically the folder where you want it to be running from. So if you've got a templates folder, this is you would point to the level above the templates folder. This is where it's looking for stuff when you just type in a file name. So usually that's the same directory as the executable, but not necessarily. So and then user. Which user do you want it to run as? Because we don't want it running as root. We don't need to. We need it doesn't need admin. So we'll run it as our user, and the group you can say as our user again, and then restart equals always, which is the key, the key word we want. We want it to reboot if restart the server if it goes down for whatever reason. All right. So what's the difference between exec start and working directory again? So exec start is pointing to the actual uh, executable, executable. So whereas the working directory is pointing to the folder that it's going to be running from. So when you just type in uh, that you're loading your templates from templates slash star.gohtml, um, the uh, templates folder has to be inside the working directory. Sure. So usually your executable is in the working directory, but not necessarily. Okay. Um, so that's so so yeah. This is our system uh, our description file for how our how our Go server will be run. All right, so I'm not a Linux person, but like Windows has the .exe. Yes. Mac's got the what? .app is basically a package of them, but they've kind of adopted a lot of the Linux systems. Isn't it like a DGM or something on a yeah. Mac, an executable? What is it? D what is it? DMG. DMG, that's right. And then uh, Linux doesn't have a file extension? Yeah, Linux just doesn't have a file extension. Sure about it. You, you, yeah, you, yeah, you just have the permission executable uh, uh, oh, on. on. Yeah, because huh. you got read write execute. So if anything with an executable bit set is run, execute. runnable. Well, that's kind of logical. So save and exit. 
So uh, so I said I was going to be in a in a folder called uh, serve. So make dir serve, and then uh, let's go. Uh, got this. So let's go build this and move the uh, executable so, oh, one hello world over to serve slash serve. So now if we cd over to uh, serve an ls, there's our serve executable, ls-l. You can see read, write, execute, read, execute, read, execute. Now do you have any template folders or anything? No, it's just nope. simple this is, this, this, is the slow, this is the simple hello world example. In fact, if we go over to it, I can actually show um, cat. Go. Very simple Go program. Package main, imports, func main, slash goes to index, listen to serve on port 9000, nil for default serve mux, index says 404 error if it's not slash, otherwise write hello world to the response. Simple, simple Go program. So once we've got our once we got the the executable where we said where it's going to be, and we've got our description file for system D, we have to add the service to system D. This will basically copy our uh, description file to the proper location in system D's personal management, so it knows where it's at and can uh, read it on when your computer boots. So sudo system uh, ctl so for control system control enable. And it's the file name that we specified back earlier when we created the uh, the file. So we called it serve.service. So we're going to say we're going to enable serve.service. All right, now we have to activate the service. System control start serve.service. And we can check with the status. So active running. Process ID 1001. So as soon as you do that, it doesn't require a reboot. It's just automatically running in the background yeah, so, now. So yeah, the start the start starts it right then. So, so if we go over here, ran and if we start over here, change. it's it's running. And we can exit yeah. the server, and it's still running. And if it crashes, it'll turn it right back on. So it is now running in the background. So there's more information about system D stuff here. If you want some additional uh, command line commands for it for various uh, reasons, uh, other options you can throw into the config file. There's a million options. I basically gave the absolute most basic constantly running uh, description file. Um, all right. So that's that. So uh, before I continue, I think I want to diverge a bit to, uh, I, I, last time I just used git clone to get all my code onto here. I wanted to show SCP to show how to move something over. So uh, Secure copy? Yep. So secure copy. So uh, in, our, in the first thing I did on Tuesday, I described the Windows way with WinSCP. That'll just give you a window that you can just drag and drop files in and out of for easy mode people. Um, Linux and Mac users have to use SCP is secure copy. Similar to you got secure shell. You got secure copy. So the way you run it is you're on your own system. So right now I'm on, I'm not SSH'd in, I'm on Todd's system. And it's secure copy. And you get the source, which will be some files on your system. So I'm just going to put the screenshot here. And the destination is the second argument. So we're not, so you can put another pl place on the current uh, device. Um, but the uh, for a remote connection though, you've used this format. So it's Daniel at our IP address, which I don't actually. Oops, that was really bad. Let's uh, try that again. Daniel at the IP address. Not all that. Okay colon, and then the, the remote path, so home folder slash screenshot dot png. So if I ran this command, it would copy the screenshot from Todd's computer over to the server. Do it, run it. Boom, done. Now if I SSH over, 
You already have it. I've got the HT. I got the HTTP included. Oh, that's right. So I switch over ls screenshot.png. Can you so open it on that machine? Uh, no, got, don't have graphics. Can't, can't look at PNG files. I mean, I can try catting it, but it's just going to be a bunch of junk. Awesome. <laughs> I remember that afternoon. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, remove that. So uh, I've got the instructions for SCP here. Um, add dash RP if it's an entire folder you're moving. Um, so if it's a, you're moving an entire folder, you just say SCP dash RP, and then the source destination. Um, but if it's just a single item, you can skip that. What's the R is for recursive and the P is for? The P is for preserve, and it preserves like the last access to timestamps and such. So I guess that's technically optional, but I prefer to keep that the same if it's not actually being modified, but just copied over. All right. So next up, before I go into this, I think I'm going to show off the uh, a full website using Go that does not use Aerospike to show kind of how much of a pain it is to manage all your own data without a database. Let's do that in the next video. Let's do so, a stop here. That's a good idea. What is this first one?